Skyblock when you think about it is a really vague game mode. Most players are expected to figure out stuff as they play. And while that's the reason me and a bunch of people love this game mode, it can be confusing at times, especially for newer players and even some veterans. So in this video I'll be giving you guys 100 tips every Skyblock player should know. Here are some beginner tips. Get talismans, as they increase your damage, especially if you play mage. If you want to know how to get each talisman, I recommend checking out the iPixel wiki. I'll also be telling you how to get your next cheapest talisman later in the video. Now once you get talismans, you can use power stones to improve your stats. Now there are two power stones that are really good. They are the luxurious pool that gives a bunch of crit damage and the ender monocle that gives a bunch of mana. If you want to make coins early game, you should try breaking shiny blocks in the end. Another way to make coins while leveling up combat XP is farming endermen with full bank 5 armor and a raider axe. If you want to make more coins, try using some final destination pieces. If you want to quickly reach combat 24, try grinding the bestiary by farming unique mobs. Grinding bingo can also make a decent amount of coins in the long run. But the best way to make coins early game is by using the bazaar. And if you want to unlock the bazaar quickly, you need to grind collections and fairy souls. The aurora staff is really OP as it doesn't have any requirements and deals a lot of damage for how cheap it is. Once you hit combat 24 and can enter the Crimson Isles, you can try grinding synthesizer V3s for a decent amount of coins. If it's your first time playing Skyblock, you should always claim your free booster cookie. If you want to try mining but don't have enough powder, I recommend mining hardstone with a jungle pickaxe as it allows you to drop sludge juice and if you level up your mole perk, it's also a decent way to grind powder. This is a simple tip but crafting items is usually better than buying them. The more you grind something, the more profitable it becomes. If you grind enough dungeons, you can make billions from floor 7 and master mode. The longer you grind a mob, the more money you'll make from it, as your bestiary level will increase, allowing you to get more coins and magic find. This is especially true for mining, as you need to reach Heart of the Mountain 7 and grind at least 7 million total powder to actually make coins. You should also learn proper routes. But if you want to make money quickly, try farming. You should also use the forge as it's a decent way to make coins passively. Some people recommend Iron Man players to sell their legendary rock pets. But I don't think you should do that, as legendary pets help boost your magic find. So unless you're a non-Iron Man player, don't sell your legendary rock pets. Mycelium minions can sometimes stop working, so I recommend checking them daily. You should upgrade your grandma wolf pet to level 100, as it allows you to make a decent amount of coins passively. Skyblock has a feature called auto pet and I urge you to use this feature. Set it up in such a way that when you cast a rod, it spawns one pet and when you cast the rod again, it spawns another pet. Some common uses are swapping between a monkey and an ocelot to level up foraging faster, swapping to a high magic find pet just before a boss dies to get rare loot and a lot more. Don't buy a legendary sheep pet if you don't play mage in dungeons unless you want magic find as the epic one has the same stats outside of dungeons. If you play mage, you should get multiple sheeps. I use an epic sheep with a textbook outside of dungeons and a leg sheep with a dwarf turtle shell mat inside of dungeons. If you want to drop an e-drag pet, don't place a lot of ice, as it will increase the odds of getting an AOTD. Also, you should use a black cat for pet luck, but you should not have over 234 magic find, as it guarantees the dragon horn drop. You should never feed candies to expensive pets, as it will drop their value by a lot. You should always level up pets while grinding skills, either directly or by using an EXP share. The Wither Skeleton pet is really good for floor 7 as it reduces the damage you take from skeletons and increases the damage you deal to withers. One of the best cheap mid game pets is the Tiger as it gives a bunch of ferocity. Check 
you plan on using corrupt soil on your minions, either add an XX large storage and collect them daily or use an enchanted hopper. Early game players should get redstone minions for the accessory bag. If you have a bonzo mask and a phoenix pet active at the same time, both of them will activate at once. And finally, you can sell some pets to George for a decent amount of coins. At 10 stacks, Crimson Armor is better than Aurora for Mage, for singular damage at least. So if you're struggling to one-tap a certain mob, try using 3 4th Crimson and Wither Goggles. Also make sure the armor is necrotic and decently starred. You should always add mix-ins to God Pots, as you'll get a bunch of Ferocity, Magic Find and Dodge Chance. During Derpy, you should try foraging on your own island, as the parks are usually packed. The Ice Spray Wand is a really good weapon for dungeon mini bosses, especially in Master Mode. If you're struggling with a boss, you should try using a Last Breath, as it reduces the boss's defense by 50%. You should also try using different arrows. From what I've heard, Bouncy is good for clear, Nansorb is good for F6 and M6, and Armor Shred is good for M7. You should grind Slayers with one other person, cause you can trade bosses to make the grind faster. You can increase your Crimson Isles profit by swapping lobbies, if you grind things like the Barbarian Duke and Magma Cubes. The Breeze Mana Region combination is pretty cheap and in some cases works better than Mana Pool Mana Region. The Spirit Mask is really good for things like Dungeons, IT Akudra and Ash Fangs, as survival is a real issue while grinding them. If you want to speed up your dungeon runs, finish clearing then look for secrets. Also don't double up in a single room, unless it's the last room. You should also get high speed even if you play mage, as it speeds up your clearing by a lot. If you play archer, don't just hold right click, as you'll lose almost half your DPS. But unless you want a carpal tunnel, use left clicks for mini bosses and bosses only. Also, you should get a 100 attack speed if you want to shoot 5 arrows per second, as if you only have 67 attack speed, you'll only shoot 4 arrows per second. 82 is still the limit for swords though. If you want higher attack speed, use a crochet tiger plushie on your pet and get the scorched book or furball power stone. Now here are some mod tips. All the mods are free and you can find links to them on my discord. You can use the NEU search feature to find specific items if your chest organization is like mine. You can also use it to find specific items in the auction house, like items with a specific attribute or pets with a specific level. If you don't want to get scammed, try using a texture pack or the NEU mod. If you don't want to memorize dungeon secrets, try using the dungeon rooms mod. But once you reach Aikata, you'll need to learn proper routes. If you want to increase your MP for cheap, Join my discord and in the bot command section use this command. To find the cheapest attributes, join the Kudra gang discord and use this command and then copy and paste the auction link it gives you. You should use the bazaar notify mod when bazaar flipping as it tells you when you've been undercut. You should use the optifine and patcher mods to reduce lag. The patcher mod can also be used to lower the volume of certain sounds. You should use the Skytales mod for the dungeon puzzle solver and slayer overlays. Also, if you type slash st, then press up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, b, a, then click add secret and name the secret small people, you can become smaller. Now this is not that useful for regular players, maybe for visibility, but if you make content, you can use this in various ways. Like I used it to turn into a minion. Now for some useful websites. I didn't link them in the description because it will reduce the reach. So join my discord to find the links. If you buzz off flip, check out skyblog.bz as it usually has the best flips. If you auction flip, check out skycoffinlet. You can also use a website called high minions to check the forge and minion profits. 
If you want to maximize any stat, you should just check the fandom wiki. You should join discord servers to find a permanent kudra or dungeon party as it makes runs faster. If you keep a recom talisman at the top left corner of your crafting table, then your crafted talisman will also be recombobulated. Depending on the attribute level, you can salvage Kudra armor sets for a decent amount of crimson essence. If you don't want your boots to glow for whatever reason, remove Depth Strider. You can actually see sneaky creepers by using the Aurora armor's ability. But if you want to easily farm them, just use the Witch's Mask. You can use one Kudra armor piece to upgrade the attributes of one other Kudra armor piece. And yes, it even works if the armor pieces are different. If you want to increase your museum level quickly, use dungeon swords, as they have the scavenger 5 enchant, which costs a decent amount of coins. You should grind experiments daily, as you'll get a decent amount of pet XP, and you can sometimes drop enchants worth millions. If you are having trouble grinding high tier dungeons, try joining a party with a tank. If you find any cool skin or cosmetic in the fire seal, buy them. Either directly by using gems or by using coins in the auction house as they are bound to go up in value. You should always grind updates early and also participate in events as they are fun and make a decent amount of coins. The implosion bell doesn't buff the gauntlet of contagion's ability but you should still get them for kudra and dungeons. But if you can't afford a good gauntlet of contagion, try buying a high tier glowstone gauntlet. Speaking of the glowstone gauntlet, you can craft flip it to make millions. You should grind at least T3 Kudra if you want to actually make coins though. To everyone who watched up to this point, thank you. I've been talking for 38 minutes straight. I also have exams right now. So bye. If you're really to that, say thank you for much more likes. If you want to watch more things, if you want to add more songs, you can have more than one score and not really comment as a read out comments.